introduce to you our three very special speakers. On my left over here is Mr. Thomas Han. He's a member of the uh, Basic Theory Committee and uh, uh, representing the Southern Peninsula and also who heads an NGO called Engage. I'll let him tell you all about it when his turn comes all right, to present this. And next to uh, Mr. Thomas Vaughan is our lovely YB Hannah Yeo. <laughs> She's the speaker of uh, the Selangor State Assembly and also um, the State Assembly person for Subang Jaya. All right? And um, over here is Dr. Faisal Haziz, a senior lecturer from UNIMAS. Now, I will tell you more about them later when they're delivering their personal presentations, okay? Now, you may be asking, what is Rose, you know? Is it the Rose, Rose, I love you or whatever? So, anyway, just to, to, to um, solve this mystery for you, we're inviting the team leader and coordinator of Rose, Ms. Antio, to tell us all about it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very happy to get the response this evening. And uh, thank you to all the speakers and panelists that are here as well. Um, I'll just uh, go through some slides. The, after you have gone through the after I've gone through the slides, you should know who we are, uh, uh, who you know why Rose, otherwise known as Rise of Sarawak Efforts. Uh, you should be able to know why we exist and what are the things that we do. Okay, so first time. Oh, you want me to? Okay, who is Rose? Um, I guess you could say we are only born after GE, la, after, you know, it was, we only got to call ourselves uh, Rise of Sarawak Efforts only after GE, which is after May 2013, about more than two years ago. So, but then I guess we, you could say that we are conceived quite a number of years before that. Huh? Yeah, so we never really called ourselves this, this name, we gave ourselves this name only after GE. And before that, uh, we're just a group of like-minded um, citizens, okay? As, as stated there, is we are citizen-initiated and citizen-driven. So we basically all um, were given training uh, to the Pachas. Uh, you know what is Pacha? Poly and counting agents now, by a group in West Malaysia called Tindak Malaysia. And they, after their training, we were encouraged to do training of Pachas ourselves. So that's our common, uh, our common what do you call? Trade, lah, okay, among the few of us in roles. Okay, then, okay, I think uh, for the why, why they exist, I will have to relate to you the story of, uh, uh, you know, during GE, um, every one of us know what happened in 505, right? So, from, from after the brainstorming and evaluation of GE and the, the activities that we got up to the day, we thought that we shouldn't be sitting until the next elections, you know, we should do something more. So, um, on that record, we were we had brainstorming and so on, so after that we thought we must mobilize and get ourselves together, organize ourselves so that we can uh, do stuff and not wait until the next elections. Okay, come, go on. So what have we done? This is just a pictorial going through what we've done. This is probably more interesting than me talking, okay? <coughs> From GE we were, before, prior to GE we gave Pacha trainings as, as you know, using the resources and materials from Tinda and various other sources as well. So we gave uh, training to basically quite a lot of rural constituencies. Uh, yeah. um, not, con not so much concentrating on towns. We actually uh, gave training in you know, semi-urban and rural constituencies. So we had to adapt the module. Okay, go on. Uh, <coughs> in the villages, just the... Uh, that's in a long house somewhere in a apartment estate. Someone? Yeah, this is in town. Someone? 
Okay, then we also participated in, in um, campaigns just one week before the elections. This is Jiaman, I think. Okay. And, um, okay, what happened? Maybe I should take a, uh, tell you a little bit more about this. The, there was about, was it 20 to 30 volunteers who were mobilized to come from West Malaysia because it was, yeah? So that means they gave up their votes. The West Malaysians gave up their votes in West Malaysia and came over to serve in Sarawak. Yeah. And they were dispatched to two particular constituencies uh, under our coordinated efforts, uh, you know, with us, with, with, right, with our side here. And so um, that gave us a lot of encouragement because, you know, people are willing to sacrifice their vote in West Malaysia, come over and help us yeah, to be the eyes and ears in the ballot box. Uh, that's how important being a pacha is. Okay. Uh, yeah, these are the fellows that came from West Malaysia. Some are actually born in Sarawak actually. They worked elsewhere, worked overseas and so on. So they came just for Sarawak <laughs> to see some sort of a change. Okay, come. Uh, now what? So everybody knows that this is 505. You were there, I wasn't even there. Huh? Some of the West, those stores from West Malaysia. Huh? Okay, what, what, what then, you know? What, what, how did people feel? After, after the elections and why did we get the results that we saw. Okay. So we came together for brainstorming sessions, quite a few, about two or three sessions, and we came to some conclusions uh, uh, that caused us to, that moved us forward, as I said, not just to wait for the next elections, but to uh, get ourselves organized and go into several activities. Okay, go on. So we we identify needs. No, I'm not quite sure of this slide. Um, okay, I think one of the things that we, we did come to an acknowledgement was that um, uh, we know, why why did rural rural constituencies and, and the folks in the rural areas voted the way they did? So we wanted to understand <coughs> to some extent, wanted to understand why it happened. So we decided to take trips to the interior, trips to uh, more rural areas. Okay, actually, Syria is not that rural, right? But to us, urbanites, uh, it's really rural already, you know, an hour away. So we decided to visit kampongs, just to know the people. Nothing, no big, great agenda, but just to know the people. So getting closer to the folks. Okay? Uh, this one on the left is in Bengong, that's about four or five hours up the hill, okay, in Padawan area. So, you know, same thing, familiarizing ourselves with rural situations, scenarios, people's mindsets, and all that sort of thing. Go on. Okay, the next activity that we uh, decided to do was uh, engage with new voters. Sorry, we, we did all this more or less simultaneously now. So we registered voters. Uh, we worked with some party folks to register voters and some of it we did it on our own. Um, okay, so you can see those places that we went to, the markets and so on, where there are crowds. Uh, okay, then we also developed, uh, uh, one of our subcommittees also developed a module um, to raise voters' awareness or citizens' awareness about rights. So. Okay, then this is our inaugural uh, training session. We call it, the module is called Project Rumah Baru. If anyone is interested, uh, you can approach one of us and we will share this module with you freely. Okay, go on. Uh, <clears throat> then we also convene a financial literacy program because one of the ways to empower rural folks is to know how to manage the money. But after after we, we you know we learned this module, we also did we also realized that that um, uh, rural folks do not have constant uh, income, isn't it? Their income is up and down. Those who work with uh, rural people and the urban poor will know that. So it didn't really how to say uh, get traction uh, huh? Although we empowered a lot, you know, as you can see, those who received this training, there was a lot of them, but the traction is not yet there. But if any one of you, you know, in, after this, this tonight's uh, meeting, 
you want to run with it, you want to test it out, by all means, come and see us. Okay. Then the other thing that we did, <coughs> this was along the way, right? this was by the way, right? we um, had some nutritious food packs, nutrition, nutritious food packs that was from our friends in KL. So we distributed it to the needy. Yeah, so, um, yep. So, okay, then uh, we do a bit of, we do quite a lot of collaboration work with others, other NGOs and so on. Uh, the recent one that we uh, involved ourselves with as individuals, uh, rather this is not really under rules, but we, you know, a few of us went on this, this uh, exercise. We went to do some voter status verification in Patong, which is about four hours away. Okay, visit quite a bit of long houses. I think covered about nine, eight or nine long houses. Iban, this is Iban area. Okay, gone. Okay, then this probably um, uh, one of the most technical things that we did. Uh, I, I won't call it technical. I shouldn't call it technical, but it's it's about delineation. Um, we were involved in, at two levels. One, we were involved in collect. We were involved in the uh, in in collecting um, signatures to to for letters for, to submit letter of objections for P one nine six dumping. So we we had roadshow. I think this next slide. Yeah, we had uh, some roadshows to collect the signatures and. At the, at the same time, create awareness, you know, about what is delineation because a lot of people do not know. Yeah, so, but unfortunately, the bad news is that we didn't qualify for the local inquiries. <laughs> uh, no reasons given. We were just not qualified, even though we got 116 signatures. Okay, but then has been kind of like eclipsed by the good news uh, given by the courts about two, three days ago, last week, eh? last Thursday. When the courts declared that, um, that you know that, that the uh, election commission have to re redo the whole exercise again, so our disappointment kind of like you know washed over already. Okay, but but I know that the work ahead is still there is still a lot of work ahead to do. Uh, in other words, we still are in the business of creating awareness, raising awareness, so that more objections can go in, more letters of objections can go in where the EC did not follow the uh, constitutional requirements of the delineation. Um, what was the other level that I wanted to share? I said two levels, right? Go back up to the other slide, where the map is, yes. Um, we were also involved in, together with Perse and Dinda, we assisted uh, the opposition political parties to Call. Yeah, to prepare objection letters, empower them, uh, give them the guidelines, uh, hold their hand a bit, you know. <laughs> okay, I'm just talking condescendingly at the moment, sarcastically. Uh, okay, to, to file objections. And how many letters of objections were filed, Thomas? 62. 62, 62. 62 letters of objections was filed this time round, compared to 10 years ago, you know. 62 just for one state, Sarawak only. Yeah. So you know, we I think to a to a measure of success, to a to a level, we were successful in, in getting them to object to what was not fair. Yeah. In so far as delineation is concerned. Okay. So if anyone else also you know want to know more about this, what is delineation, come and see us. I think as the night roll rolls on, you will find out a bit more if you don't know. You know. Okay, um, so our tagline, sorry, oh, sorry, okay, if not for us, then, if not, if not us, who, if not now, when? So, uh, this is our tagline for Rose, and uh, I think it, it speaks of uh, taking action, you know, what each one of us are citizens, we have a role to play, uh, we want to encourage participation and engagement in in this this area of nation building okay. action changes things i think okay then final slide is how you contact us we have a website uh, not very many things on our website still being you know we need help in that area if any one of you can contribute yeah that's it for rose uh, any questions about rose no lah, huh? 
We'll get on to the more in 